So we can all agree by now that Cartoon Network's 2018 to 2019 lineup is freaking amazing. We've got a number of upcoming series that have massive potential behind them and are soon to join the returning series that have already made a name for themselves. So what have we got? We've got Victor and Valentino, Summer Camp Island, Crick of the Creek, Apple and Onion, which I uh, recently saw and will be seeing more of later down the road, and of course, Infinity Train. And uh, I'm looking forward to all of these shows. Yes, including Summer Camp Island, which strangely is the least well-received of these series. Not saying that the reception toward it is bad or anything, it's just not to the same level of fanfare that the other shows have met. Regardless of the feelings towards these shows, whether they're the unanimous opinion or the unpopular opinion, the fact of the matter is, Cartoon Network is totally killing it. With all these upcoming and returning series, alongside the different platforms that the network has, be it the app or the website, all of which will carry the network through to the next decade, one has to wonder, what do Disney and Nickelodeon have in store that'll keep them in the competition. I can't really speak for Disney, but I did find something for Nickelodeon. This has actually been covered in multiple sites, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go with Engadget.com and Deadline.com because of their high profile and their reliability. Both of these articles actually present the exact same points, but I think Engadget presents these points in a more interesting way than Deadline does. They basically go into detail about the strategy that Nickelodeon will be implementing over the course of the year. It's not just restricted to the programming of the network. There's actually a bunch of other stuff in this strategy that's also worth mentioning, and I will mention it later. With respect to the programming, both articles state that Nickelodeon will be airing 800 or more new- Shit. With respect to the programming, both articles state that Nickelodeon will be broadcasting 800 or more brand new episodes of new and returning series, which is 20% greater than the number of brand new episodes that were aired the year before. Now, since this is Nickelodeon we're talking about here, this obviously means that these will be brand new episodes for both the animated programming and the live action programming. So anyone expecting those brand new episodes to be episodes for just the animated programming alone, don't count your blessings quite yet. Now as for the new stuff. Obviously, the meat and potatoes for us will be the animated shows, which would be the TMNT reboot, and maybe the Blue's Clues remake, and obviously the Loud House spinoff. Surprisingly, I have not seen a single mention of any of the pilots that were uploaded on Nickelodeon's YouTube channel on either of these articles. I don't know why that is, but it just seems strange to me. It really does. But that's nowhere near as strange as what we're about to look at right now. On the last two paragraphs of the Engadget article, you're going to find out exactly what I mean when I say that it presents this information in a more curious way than the Deadline article does. This portion of the article basically explains the other half of Nickelodeon's strategy, which is the branching out to virtual and augmented reality technologies, or VR and AR technologies. Far be it from me to knock someone for trying something new, but I noticed a few glaring cracks in this portion of the strategy, 
which I will get to, but for now, let's just finish off the article. The last paragraph of the Engadget article features a few remarks from the president of the Nickelodeon group, Sima Zargami, which is basically an excerpt from an interview conducted by Variety.com, but that's besides the point. The point is, those remarks bear mentioning because they're pretty fucking hilarious. Why don't we actually look at the remarks themselves? So this is what Sima Zargami says. TV is still the biggest platform. Kids are definitely migrating to other places. We don't pretend they don't love Netflix and they don't love YouTube. But what we are able to do is set up a mass simultaneous audience, which is still important to a lot of people. And she also adds, Your odds of getting a fat hit are greater if you have more at-bats. Actually, to be fair, that last point is kind of valid. You want to be able to expand to reach out as far and as much as possible, so fair is fair, I guess. No, the baffling parts are the wording of the title of this article and the remarks themselves. Because what a lot of people seem to not realize, or if they do realize it, they downplay it severely, is that in journalism, wording is a major make-or-break point. What I'm personally getting from this is that Nickelodeon, or at least their president, is viewing YouTube and Netflix as mere distractions and not really the very valid, viable, and reliable sources of news and information that they are. So already that's a red flag. I hate to rain on anybody's parade, but given that this is Nickelodeon, and they've been a pain in the ass to me in the past, I'll make an exception this time around. Sorry to burst your bubble, Nickelodeon. Actually, I'm not sorry. Not for you, anyway. But you'd be surprised to know how many people use YouTube as more than the distraction that you say it is. Go ahead and make your YouTube is a distraction claims to the numerous businesses whose livelihoods hinge on this one website. Go ahead, be my guest. Just be sure to keep a fire extinguisher handy. Or if you're still not convinced, you can always ask the 1 billion people who use YouTube on a daily basis, assuming of course that you're willing, to put in the resources into that type of market research, but hey, what do I know? And that point about television still being the biggest platform? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, maybe in other parts of the world where the internet is not yet fully integrated into their culture, but not the Western world, and especially not the United fucking States. Miss Zargami, Nickelodeon, please be in touch with reality. People are transitioning from television to YouTube, Netflix, and other similar platforms for a damn good reason. There ubiquitous, easily accessible, easily usable, and reliable. They circumvent the shortcomings and limitations of television and physical media. One of those limitations and shortcomings being a dependence on location. Speaking of which, let's talk a little bit about Slime Zone, the first ever Nickelodeon multiplayer social VR experience. You know Nickelodeon, for wanting to extend your reach, you sure are digging yourselves into a hole with this location-based nonsense. This is how you're gonna compete with YouTube and Netflix? Give me a break. Miss Zargami, are you sure you haven't had one too many bottles of booze at work? Let me explain why I personally think that it's unwise for Nickelodeon to try to compete with YouTube and Netflix through virtual reality. Number one. This is still a relatively new form of technology. Now yeah, the concept has been around for as long as anyone can remember, but it hasn't really been explored as intricately until recently. And even then, the results of these explorations are shaky at best and awkward at worst. And hilariously enough, YouTube is one of a few who have experimented with VR. So it's rather funny well, both funny and ironic, that Nickelodeon is trying to compete against an internet-based platform with a technology that is also being used by that internet-based platform. Number two, just take a look at what the first sentence of the third paragraph says. 
It says, to select IMAX VR centers around the globe. Already, that's a major flaw. Just look at it. IMAX VR centers around the globe. Select IMAX VR centers around the globe. Yes, compete with two widespread platforms with a form of technology that not only is still experimental, but won't be as widespread as those two platforms. That's a real genius move you're making there, Nickelodeon. Way to think two steps ahead of the competition. Way to go. I'm just saying that if you're gonna compete with something or someone, don't you think it would be in your best interest to play on an even playing field instead of an uneven playing field and inadvertently put yourself at a disadvantage? Nickelodeon, today's generation is nowhere near as patient as the previous generations were. Your little VR thing is not something that any sensible person would go out of their way to partake in on a regular basis, much less a daily one. Okay, in all fairness, I do find it admirable that you're encouraging socialization amongst your demographic. Not just socialization through technology, but also physical socialization. I find it admirable that you're trying to urge in your demographic an aspect of society that has lately been on the decline and should not have been on the decline to begin with. That I can get behind. But if that's the case, don't bandy it as an alternative to YouTube and Netflix. This is just coming off as innovation for the sake of innovation, without any kind of defined, clear-cut purpose behind it. You could have just gone, Hey guys, we've got something brand new that we'd like you to try out. Instead of, Hey kids, do you love YouTube and Netflix? Well, screw those two, because we've got something so much better. Your marketing may have been so much different, but it also would have been so much better, and quite frankly, less embarrassing. The second half of the Nickelodeon strategy just reeks of desperation. While Cartoon Network and possibly Disney are sticking with what they know works best and not letting any innovations they cook up with get to their heads, Nickelodeon is doing the exact opposite. Say what you will about the bandwagoning mentality, but when people jump on board an idea by the millionfold, then chances are that that idea was a good one to begin with. Who knows? Maybe Nickelodeon will prove me wrong, and this whole VR crap they're going with won't turn out to be crap after all. But as it is now, Cartoon Network have a commanding runaway lead on Nickelodeon because they're doing a lot of things right. Whereas Nickelodeon is more or less grasping at straws here, which doesn't bode well for what is supposed to be one of the leading networks in family and children's entertainment. Only time will tell if things turn around for them, but as of now, it doesn't look good. That's just my perspective on the matter. Feel free to share yours in the comment section because I want to see different perspectives on this, not just my own. Until the next video, this is the one and only CR Martin, and ciao for now. Thank you.